Hi, my name is Henry Adams Feck, and I'm thrilled to be with you reading from my new book, Life is Like Canadian Football and Other Authentic Folk Songs. This was just published by Invisible Publishing, and the book tells the story of Henry Adams Feck, who discovers in the basement of Library and Archives Canada a box of tapes, which it turns out contain the folk songs of Canadian football players. And the discovery alters the trajectory of this character. He begins to quest in both his professional and personal life after authenticity, which is a very difficult thing to find, he soon learns. Um, I'd like to begin by reading from a short section called Night Herding Song. I have dreamt the following scene, which takes place in a locker room at dusk. Players and coaches gone home, save one, the second string middle linebacker. Still wearing his sweat salted tank top and grass stained pants and obviously exhausted. He sits on a long bench strewn with towels and half full water bottles, odorous knee pads and jock straps. He diligently tunes a scratched up guitar while an older man with sideburns and long hair sets up a large condenser microphone, a delicate instrument in its own right. After unspooling the cables and positioning the stand, the phonographer stands back by his reel-to-reel -reel tape recorder, propped solidly on a parallel bench, and after a moment of meditation, inspects his informant. The player halts his restless, shaking knee. And then, a song emerges in the key of G. It is about the essential desire of humanity to create both the world and itself. Hence, it is a song about everything that it is possible to sing. And it is beautiful. The vibrations move throughout the cavernous space, swelling and surging, expanding and contracting. Converted into analogous electrical waves by the microphone, the signal sears like an endlessly burning cigarette straight onto the humming tape. By the end of the second refrain, the phonographer has begun, silently, to weep. I'd like now to, to play for you a, an abridged version of one of the songs also in the book, a song that may indeed have been performed in such a situation as described in that section there. This is called Song Written Upon Getting Cut by the Argos. We could walk all night in this city and still be in this city talk all night about leaving and still be in this city I could drink all night in this city if we had any money would you rather be so drunk and bankrupt An abridged version there of song written upon getting cut by the Argos. So it turns out that this long-haired character that we, we saw there setting up his microphone, this is Staunton R. Livingston, who's a radical, communistic, iconoclastic folk song collector operating in the, in the 60s and 70s in Canada. And um, Henry becomes fascinated by this, 
by this character, uh, becomes a sort of mentor in a way um, to Henry as Henry begins to collect his own folk songs. But there are difficulties, as you will see. A relevant obstruction in the field of Livingston studies is the fact that after 1966, Staunton R. Livingston did not write anything down. This, of course, does not mean that he also refrained from thinking or imparting. Still, representation of Livingston's philosophy has come to us only through the writings of members of his audiences, the entirety of which has had a vested interest in discounting the integrity, cohesion, and revolutionary power of his ideas. All communication, even communication with oneself, involves the unavoidable distortions of noise. Things get even messier when one's enemies are the ones writing the story. I had not yet fully fleshed out these problematics when I first began to listen to the CFL sessions in the summer of 2008. My internship at Library and Archives Canada had ended in late July, and I was in Toronto, having found a short-term sublet in Little Portugal, in order to collect myself before my duties as a teaching assistant recommenced in September. I had managed before leaving Ottawa to digitize the entirety of the CFL sessions under the radar of the institution's panoptic supervisory system so that the evaluation and distribution of the project's cultural value could not be slowed by any bureaucratic plots. So, Every morning, as I walked east along College Street, past the ancient shopkeepers sweeping or watering their stretches of sidewalk, the strong summer sun already beating down, I was thus able to listen through headphones to the folk songs of Canadian football players. And I was falling in love. Another song from the book here for you, another abridged version. A song that, indeed, Henry would have been listening to through his headphones on his way to the Robarts Library. This is On Discipline. You're so pretty and you're so young. I'll mess around a bit, but I can't come. I need my legs, I need my energy. If that's superstitious, well, then superstition is a part of me. discipline. So this discovery, as I think I said, you know, alters the trajectory of this character. Um, and not only that, the songs and the language of Canadian football and this method of this Livingston character all begin to kind of seep into Henry Adams Feck and to begin to, to shape his, his worldview and his way of operating in the field and in his life as well. Perhaps most influential of all is the song, Life is Like Canadian Football, uh, which is in a way the title track of the book 
And I'd like to finish by, by singing just a bit of it for you. Life is like Canadian football, you don't get many chances. But there's a lot of room to move around. Life's like Canadian football, there aren't many teams, but you can pick one that's close to your heart, and you can scream. Life's like Canadian football, it's like life's like Canadian football, it's like life. There's a lot of room to move around. Thank you so much for listening. My name is Henry Adams Feck. My book is called Life is Like Canadian Football and Other Authentic Folk Songs. This has been published by Invisible Publishing. And I'd like to thank very much um, Hillside and the Eden Mills Writers Festival. It's a huge, huge honor to be here with you uh, reading and singing for you. So thank you very much for the invitation. And I hope to see you all in person one day soon. Enjoy the rest of the festival and take care.